If you grew up in the early 2000s and owned an Xbox, chances are you played a smash hit title called Halo. Halo was the very first FPS game that I actually dove into head on, playing hours and hours with my buddies on the couch, whether in campaign or playing multiplayer. If you are a veteran to my channel, you most likely know that I played the large MMORPG known as DC Universe Online. But what you probably don't know is that I've been playing other MMORPGs for years. Well, you might know considering that that's what the channel is all about, covering MMORPGs. Anyways, the the point is that during my early years in DCUO, I didn't necessarily know if DC was going to be my main game. I played around at the time, and during the early years of DCUO, there came a game that did catch my attention for a solid month or two. That game would be the subject of today's video. Defiance. Harkening back to the beginning of the video, I'm sure you put two and two together that Defiance, at least for me, reminds me of a third-person Halo, which is probably why I played it so much back upon release. It was really my first MMO shooter that I could play every day and find myself having fun with, since Global Agenda just didn't cut it for me. Maybe we will cover that game sometime in the future. Defiance released all the way back on April 2nd, 2013, with Defiance 2050, an enhanced reimagining of the game, being released on modern consoles April 27th, 2018. Defiance was also the first video game, as far as I'm aware, that tied its universe within a TV show. Defiance, the TV show, aired on the channel Sci-Fi for three seasons, getting cancelled relatively quickly. Fortunately for the players of Defiance the game, it pressed on releasing more content for players to enjoy for the years to come. I'd also dare say that Defiance is probably easily considered the stepping stone to looter-shooter MMOs like Destiny and The Division. Defiance was developed and published by Tryon Worlds, the same company that would go on to create games like Rift and Trove. With a big company backing the game, a TV show that you could watch to immerse yourself more into its lore, and gameplay that could be related to Halo in an early Destiny, Tryon might have had something here. Now that the game is going on 7 years old though, is it still worth playing after all this time? Let's get into Defiance 2050. Before we go any further into the video, we should probably establish the difference in Defiance and then Defiance 2050. Finding a thread online discussing differences between the two, it seems that originally the game was built on a 32-bit architecture, with 2050 being 64-bit. I don't really know what that means, but typically 64-bit architecture means that it can hold a lot more memory. 2050 also changed the monetization model with the game, being fully free to play, including most of the DLC from the original game, slightly improving some of its graphics, and changing some gameplay mechanics. Personally, while I did play the original Defiance, I don't remember much from it, nor did I play for an incredibly long amount of time, so I can't really comment largely on any of the other differences I might miss in this video. The subject of this video anyways, is more largely on the 2050 version of the game, since that is what is currently playable on modern consoles, as well as Tryon more or less pushing 2050 as the definitive way to play Defiance, since you can still play the original game. Essentially, think of the original Defiance being the old school RuneScape, while Defiance 2050 50 is RuneScape 3. Plus, if you really want to look into the original Defiance, there is plenty of other videos out there discussing the topic, with big YouTubers like Angry Joe reviewing it. Oh yeah! Oh my god, I'm gonna be playing this game! Guess what? Patch error! Patch fucking error! Defiance 2050 is a free-to-play MMO shooter. It has many things you would come to expect from the MMO genre. A vast open world, tons of interactive quests, online multiplayer content in the forms of PvE and PvP, progression systems like leveling up and gear score, randomized loot, reputation systems, titles, cars which are essentially mounts, customization options, cash shop, the list goes on. The major question here that should probably be answered is what makes Defiance 2050 stand out from other MMOs on the market these days? Well, if I'm being blatantly honest here, 2050 doesn't really do anything different that would make you turn on your console and download it right now. Everything I listed here can be found in other games in the MMO genre, with most of them probably being done much better than how Defiance 2050 does them. Don't get me wrong here though, since 2050 does have all those features, it might have something for the avid MMO player out there. Since the game is largely open world, most of the content is an instance, unless you are doing dungeons or PvP, which is pretty different compared to games like Destiny, where the game is largely instanced in different maps. Let's start with the basic gameplay structures of Defiance 2050, since there is a lot to cover. In the beginning of 2050, you'll most likely be experiencing the game's story campaign. The story has a decent chunk of gameplay to experience, and for what it's worth, the story is a bit on the silly side, which can probably get a chuckle out of those who enjoy that sort of thing, even if it is incredibly stupid at times. <sighs> Which one of these dealies opens this bitch? Ah! Ah, nice. Holy shit. 
Stucco. 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 Got he. <laughs> the campaign will provide a couple of different things for you as a new player. First, it will get you familiar with the game's controls, which are fairly standard for your third person shooter. You also level up, which in this game is called your ego level, since there is a computer AI jammed into your brain called Environmental Guardian Online, or just ego. Get it though? Ego? It's a joke since it's like ego, like, like your ego. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't really funny to me either. The cap level for Ego is 50. There is also your class level. You choose one class to unlock at the beginning of the game, and then you can either buy the rest with real money or earn them over time by playing the game. Each class can level up to level 25. So besides Ego, there is a ton of progression there as well. Next is your power level, which is essentially how powerful your armor and weapons are. The higher power your equipment is, the more powerful enemies you can fight without getting absolutely murdered like I did in a couple instances. You can also earn weapon ranks for each type of weapon in the game, as well as ranks for the cars you drive, so in total, there is a ton of progression in the game. Gun ranks go all the way to 75, which is crazy, especially with all the gun types in the game, which include pistols, assault rifles, light machine guns, SMGs, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, and sniper rifles. Loot works like any other RPG out there, with green being your uncommon gun, blue being rare, purple being epic, and then orange being legendary, with yellow being a special weapon. Other equipment will include your shield, which has three different types that can all have their weaknesses and strengths. The armor shield will have a yellow bar shown, which is weak to corrosive and piercing. The standard shield like Halo will have a light blue bar and is weak to electricity and quantum. And finally, a health shield, which increases your max health more and is weak to fire. And as you can probably tell from that description, there is also different kinds of damage types. <laughs> Next is your grenade, which also has a power rank, and for the most part, until you are max rank, you will be equipping whatever has the highest power, but there are tons of different grenades to equip and try out. It's pretty insane. Lastly would be your car or ATV mount that you can summon at any time and ride around to get across the map easier. Typically, these will be earned from pursuits or can be bought in the cash shop. You can also use these to run over enemies, which is pretty hilarious. Community-wise, the game is fairly friendly, I suppose. In the time I played, the chat never had anyone speak. Literally, and that's with maybe around 30 hours or so of gameplay. I did join a clan, but even then, no one said a word. I guess in this case, since I am playing on console, people are most likely inclined to talk in party chats that those individual players will make. Chat in the game functions like any MMO, with people being able to type messages or perform different emotes or phrases at the push of a button. Further customization mechanics would be enhancing guns you acquire, swapping mods, class skill trees, and synergy gems. Enhancing guns is basically what it sounds like. You gather gun scraps to use to enhance your current gun you are using, increasing its effectiveness. Once enhanced, you can do things like further customize certain statistics. There is also equipable mods that further Further augments a gun's stats, things like gun barrels, stocks, magazines, etc. Guns can also be tricked up by earning weapon skins or buying weapon skins, so if you like looking fresh, then this game does have those sort of options. Each class every level gains a skill point that can be spent in the class skill trees, with each class playing vastly different from one another. The current classes are Assault, Assassin, Guardian, Combat Medic, Demolitionist, Crusader, and Engineer. Synergies are essentially equipable modification gems that further augment things about your class or playstyles. Essentially, there is a ton of ways to deck out your character, including things like outfits, titles, and helmets. Once you get all of that inside your brain, you'll probably start diving into the game properly. There is a handful of content types to explore. First is the side quests you unlock from doing the main quest, which will help you level up and get more gear. As you do the main missions, you also unlock dungeons that you can queue for in matchmaking, which unfortunately was largely dead anytime I tried to queue for any dungeon, most likely because I was not an endgame player. Open world content is most likely what you will largely be playing anyways, and includes things like randomized encounters encounters, large open world bosses that you can fight in multiplayer events called arc falls, and then challenges which take place in the forms of races or survival challenges. There is also achievements called Pursuits in Defiance 2050, which also reward you with things like titles or even weapons, as well as daily and weekly quests called Contracts. Lastly, there is PvP content which has a variety of maps as well as a major PvP mode called Shadow War, which plays like a large-scale PvP map mimicking games like Battlefront, in which you try to capture points against another enemy 
enemy team. Smaller content would include things like collecting different cars, discovering all points of interest on the map, collecting all intel recorders, getting gold on all the challenges. Overall, there's a fairly decent amount of content that Defiance 2050 has to offer. Unfortunately, Defiance's plethora of content all have downsides to them, which is what largely made a lot of the player base leave when 2050 was first released. Events that you come across in the open world will commonly recycle themselves, and you will often find that you are playing many of the same events fairly often since there is only a handful of different instances that can occur in each zone of the map. PvP is largely considered unbalanced, with certain gun types outright being useless since other more effective guns such as shotguns are going to be more preferable. Gameplay can also also be quite janky with server lag being a major problem since day one, with Tryon largely ignoring many of the problems that plagued the original Defiance. When I tested the game, I tried the Xbox One version, and for the most part, the game worked fine. No crashes occurred during any of my play sessions, but lag was such an annoying commonality. Anytime a large arc fall was occurring, which is where most of the player base is, the game would lag to the point of enemies walking in place, getting hit from random things you never even saw coming, and tons of other issues. Issues. The cash shop is fairly good, but you can buy legendary guns and items that can potentially be considered pay to win. However, to largely get the most out of buying guns and such, you need to be max level as well as have a secondary currency to reroll any statistics that might be bad on anything you might acquire. Overall, unfortunately, I think Defiance 2050 did have a good chance to capture an audience in today's gaming audience, but Tryon dropped the ball in so many ways, it seemed like it will never recapture what it could have had. Not to mention anyone who played the original game could not carry over their characters and purchases from the original game which split the community even further with people playing the 2050 version and others playing the original version. It's a bit of a sad story, but really the blame can only be brought back to Tryon. Anyways, here are my final thoughts on Defiance 2050. Defiance 2050 is a fun, simple third-person shooter with a lot of depth and customization should you choose to learn all about it. I mean, if you didn't get excited about the tons of player choices I mentioned earlier in the video, then I don't know what will. The open world is fairly large and fun to explore with lots of things to do and discover. Anytime you are playing, there will always be something to go out and interact with, so you should never have a dull moment. Since the game is free to play with a lot of things able to be earned by just playing the game, I would say it's one of the more fair games within the MMO genre minus the fairly pay-to-win items you can purchase, like the loot crates. Speaking of loot, Defiance has a similar loot system to games like Destiny, where enemies will have chances to drop pretty much any sort of equipment, whether it be mods, grenades, shields, or guns. Especially once you get to higher levels, I can see loot being more exciting and fun to pick up. Seven classes is not a whole lot, but I can say each class feels very different to play. Some are more melee-focused, some are to help the team, and others focus on dealing straight damage. If you play, I encourage you to try playing different classes if you purchase them or earn them. The open world events such as Arc Falls are pretty exciting, especially when there are a lot of players helping with them. It can really turn into a spectacle to play. Lastly, the community seems to be pretty diehard with the franchise in general. If you have any questions about Defiance or Defiance 2050, I definitely encourage going on Discord or their forums. While I did enjoy my time with Defiance 2050, especially having fun with how much stuff there was to do, the game is very dated in many ways. Graphics for one look like an early Xbox 360 title, and technically it kind of is. By no means is it absolutely terrible, but it is lacking because of its age. A huge misstep by Tryon was splitting the community into two games. While it can be argued that maybe Tryon couldn't carry over players into the new game, they should have made an effort to continue one game, not two. Because a lot of players preferred the way the original Defiance played, plays, 2050's player base is suffering because of it. Tryon either needs to change a lot of things about 2050, or correctly port the original because a lot of players are refusing to play and they aren't exactly getting new players to play 2050. Another issue that plagues the game is old bugs, glitches, and server lag. You think after all these years and with the development that went into the enhanced port, they would fix certain things, but it's been largely exposed that Tryon more or less did nothing when they released the 2050 version of Defiance. The Cash Shop has some pay to win elements, unfortunately, and while yes, you can earn a large portion of what is in the Cash Shop, that won't stop players who have money from just spending a lot to get all the power. The game is rather repetitive since most of the hook is just killing enemies. Yes, you'll find events on the open world, maybe run a dungeon, but you're essentially rinsing and repeating all of those events with just killing enemies. Besides the racing minigames, there isn't really anything to break up that monotony, unfortunately. Finally, there is a bit of question on if Defiance 
Alliance 2050 is going to continue to get content. The last major update was back in May of 2019, and since then, as far as I could find, they have not announced what they are working on. An updated roadmap would give players a reason to keep playing, rather than join those who have given up. And that is my video on Defiance 2050. If you made it this far into the video, please tell me in the comments below. Do you play Defiance 2050? Do you play the original? Have you wanted to play? I respond to all my comments, so I'm curious to see what people have to say. If you like this video, obviously please go ahead and click that like button for me, as well as subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Subscribing to the channel and liking the video helps out immensely, so I appreciate any support I get from you all out there. I also have social media links to Twitter and Discord, in the description below, so if you would like to join those communities, follow those links. Lastly, I would like to, as always, say thank you to my loyal supporters who watch all of my videos and support my content. Once again, you guys are amazing. Anyways, that is all for this video, I will catch you in the next one.